Hey, what's going on guys? Thank you for joining the video. I uh, just wanted to make a video. Um, I'm going to be replacing this head unit today. Um, this is a 2001 Lexus GS300. Uh, this process is going to be applicable to any Lexus GS model between 2000, uh, actually 1998 and 2005. Um, so hope you guys like the video. Please hit the like, subscribe, and uh, let's get right to it. First thing uh, we want to do is we're going to pop out this little cover here and that's just going to be so we can get this shifter out of the way and we're going to probably move just move this back here um, so let me take care of that real quick pop that cover right off and there's a little button right inside you just want to use this push it down and then it'll let you shift the car out of park without there being any key in the ignition all right next thing we want to do is you want to grab a pry bar or a small screwdriver or something like that and work your way around this top section to get these AC controls out of the way. Just pop it in and just push it right out. There we go. And then just grab it, go ahead and pull it out. And then you've got two connectors back here. Uh, one's for the clock and the other one's for your emergency brake. I mean, the emergency hazard lights. Um, and we wanna just get those unplugged. Sorry about that. And then there's two right there. Oh. And I'm doing this one-handed, so as you can see, I dropped it. Sorry about all the extra noise. I got my little Milwaukee fan running over here. All right, guys, next thing we want to do is we want to get this little ashtray removed down here. And I apologize about all the mess. This is all a bunch of spilled coffee I have everywhere. Um, so you want to just remove this tray. And then you want to just grab onto this nice and firmly and just give it a quick pull. And this whole bottom section should just come right out. Go. and don't pull it all the way out because you do have another connector back here for that cigarette lighter um, so you want to disconnect that as well just unplug this right here there's the tab and pull it right out all right guys so now with that out of the way you've got pretty much just a head unit left in here and you've got one 10 millimeter bolt here one here and if you look down here you got one right there and another one over here Guys, so what you want to do is you want to grab a 10 millimeter socket. Um, if you have a magnetic one, that'd be good. That way you don't drop any of those bolts down or any of those bolts down behind the dash. Um, it's either a ratchet with a 10 millimeter or in my case, I'm going to be using this Milwaukee and I'm going to be putting it onto the lowest setting just because I don't want to strip anything. And then we're going to go ahead and remove these. I don't have a magnetic socket, so I'm just going to grab them with my hand. And we're going to get the other one out. Grab that one out. And then we can get these last two under here. Now it's pretty tight. Got that one out. And then we're going to get that last one right back here. So now that we took out all the 10 millimeter bolts from the bottom and from the top, what we want to do is we want to grab this head unit. You're going to give it a nice pull um, and it'll come right out. Just be careful because the radio connectors and the connectors for the thermostat control are still connected and you don't want to damage those harnesses. Uh, so we're just going to pull it out and then we're going to undo those from the back. And then I'm just going to turn this a little forward. And as you can see here, the ones for the AC controls and the harness for the radio back there. Guys, I had to put the camera down to be able to unplug these because I did need both my hands. So you're gonna get those unplugged, you're gonna get these unplugged, and then you're gonna unplug your little antenna wires over here on this side. And then we're just gonna go ahead and move this whole unit out of the way. And there you are. All right, guys, so now that we got that head unit out, we're gonna come over to the passenger side. Uh, this vehicle does have a factory amplifier that we're gonna have to bypass in order to get our head unit to work. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna pull your glove box open. Um, there should be one number two Phillips here, another one here, and one last one here. And then you're gonna come underneath and there's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt right there where that hole is and another one right over on this side. I've already gone ahead and taken those out. Um, this panel here will be covering the bottom and all you gotta do is just pull on it to bring it down and twist this little light bulb out. 
and then the factory amp is right there and there's a harness right inside of that that we're gonna have to use um, once you take all those bolts out there is a little plastic panel here in this little compartment area that you're gonna want to pull down on um, the airbag harness is attached to that and you just want to free it up so that when you pull the glove box out you don't pull it down or snag it or damage it in any way and I just used a small Phillips I mean a small flathead screwdriver to pop that open all right and now that you got all the bolts out and the Phillips screws out and you have this harness loosened up you just want to pull on this glove box and the whole thing will come right down and we're gonna get it down and we're gonna just completely move this whole thing out of the way Let's see here I'm trying to do this with one hand guys so bear with me I may have to uh, put this phone down real quick it's down and what you want to do is you want to grab this airbag harness pull that and move it out of the way there and then you're gonna want to unplug this little light bulb that's in there all right guys so that's the factory amp and this harness that's sitting in here is the one that we're gonna want to unplug and we're gonna have to cut all this tape open here and route that harness back this way behind the dash and out through this side so we can plug it to our head unit because that harness is the one that actually provides power and um, basically everything that the head unit needs the harness that's back here all it really does is provide power to the speakers so let's get this harness unplugged pop these little clips open so that we can get this harness pulled out there's one side and then I want to do the top one as well get that there all right there you go so see this is the exact same kind of harness that's behind our head unit um, so we're gonna want to basically pull all this tape out right here and send it that way out of this factory amp this is the harness we're gonna use here and I'm just taking all that tape off so I can separate these from these two here and then route them the way I need them, which is to go that way. So just go ahead and continue taking all that tape off so we can get as much slack out of it as we can. All right, so I've got most of this harness untaped here. Um, if you look right there, there's a, a plastic uh, clip thing right there. It looks pretty much just like this and it's meant to hold the harness in place. Um, so to pull that out, I'm gonna have to take this CD changer out and it's just one 10 millimeter bolt there. Um, might have to take that one out as well. And then it's the same thing on this side right there. I'm gonna be using a regular quarter inch ratchet um, just cause I don't wanna strip those little bolts. They're pretty, uh, it's just a nut really. So I don't wanna strip them. So I'm just gonna use a ratchet. on pretty tight I'm trying to do this with one hand guys so bear with me if uh, it's a little shaky Meter bolts off this is a CD changer came right out it's just got one harness right there you're just gonna unplug and move it out of the way if you want when you're done you can put this back even though you're not gonna use it um, or you can leave it off it'd be up to you CD changer taken out we got most of this harness untaped and separated this is the harness we're going to be using um, this harness here goes back into the amp this one is for the cd changer so we're just going to push these to the side we don't need them and what you want to do is you want to take these two and there's a little compartment right through there where you want to just push them right through and get them over to you and then you'll see them come out right over here on the side and so i got that harness passed through and it's gonna be right back here. You just wanna bring it around. This is a new harness. It's gonna plug into the back of the radio. This is the old one. I got the stuff for the clock and the hazard lights pushed up um, so we don't get confused here. 
um, and this is the head unit I'm gonna be putting in. It is a Sony DSX A415BT. It's a Bluetooth only, no CD, uh, but I don't really listen to CDs anymore. And then I also picked this up, which is just a extra harness, just in case I need to pretty much cut some stuff up or, you know, repin some wires or anything like that. But we'll see if we even need that. And then, this is the harness that goes to the back of the radio and we're just gonna try to match those up to that new harness and try to get this thing running. And here is the head unit. One sec here. Sorry, still doing this one hand. This is the face to the radio. And there it is, you see how shallow it is. Um, it'll fit nicely right in there be the two harnesses that I'm going to be using they're going to plug right into here one on this one and one on there and then I'm just going to take those ends match them up to the colors on this harness which is the one for the head unit and then the only other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to have to find the constant 12 volt on this harness and on the new harness and then the new harness does not have an actual power wire for the ignition when you turn the key to tell the radio to turn on so we're gonna have to take that from the original harness and get it to the head unit um, and we're just gonna use some pliers basically to strip the wire um, we're gonna find out which one it is and which one the constant 12 volt is and then um, that way we can use them and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use uh, just a regular test light all right guys, so to use the test light, you're just gonna wanna take this end and ground it out somewhere, either like on a bolt or that piece of steel right there. Um, that's probably gonna be the best one. So I'm just gonna reach in here and ground it out on here. So I can see what I'm doing. Sorry. There we go. So now you got that connected to bare metal and it's grounding out. I'm gonna grab the test light and we're just gonna try to find the constant 12 volts. All right guys, so now we're gonna try to find the power, um, which is accessory. So we're gonna put the key in, turn the ignition key over. We're gonna take our test light and see here, and we're gonna try to just stick it in one of these and until we find the one that lights up and it's that one there. And now remember our top one was our constant 12 volt, so that one's still gonna have power going to it. So I'm trying to do this with one hand here. And then now our bottom one also has power and that's gonna be a gray wire right there. Guys, right, so this is where we're at so far. I uh, basically took the harness for the radio and I started crimping it together, just matching them up color for color um, on the harness that's going to the one that we brought over from the amp. Um, and I just, like I said, I matched up the colors. The only ones I haven't connected yet are the ground, the power, the 12 volt accessory. Uh, this orange wire here, give me a sec here. Go. This orange wire is gonna be for the dimmer. So I'm not gonna be using it because um, I don't really care if uh, my radio dims down when I turn the headlights on or not. Uh, this is gonna be for the ground. And then yellow is gonna be for the 12 volt and red is gonna be for power. So, um, like I said, those harnesses I got in this kit, um, and it comes with four different ones, and I just took the two that matched up, that fit the harness that I brought over from the amp. All right, guys, so we got the stereo wired in, got the connections made, ignition is on, power is on, but the radio does not turn on. And that is because this harness there is a red wire here you can see the power wire is that red one in here but there is no wire for the power coming on this side and that's where we got to go back to the original stereo harness and the power wire is going to be this gray one which we already verified with our tester but let me grab the tester again We will verify one more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the tester in right there. And then bear with me guys. I'm trying to 
to hold the phone and do it all at the same time. And there we go. So we're verifying that's the one that gets power. And let me turn the ignition off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set you guys down. Give me one sec guys and i'm gonna turn the ignition off and we're gonna see the power goes out so that's how you verify that that is your power there you go now you see it and then it's off and it comes on and off the ignition yeah, sorry about that guys dropped the phone there uh it's kind of hard doing all this with one hand all the connections made as far as the wiring harness goes. So this is the side that plugs into the radio. I took the two harnesses that I bought that came in this pack. I just took the two, it comes with four. I took the two that matched up to the harness that we brought over from the amp. And I just plugged everything in uh, by color. The only thing that I did do was I cut this red one. Cause if you look at the position of the red wire here, let me see if I can show you guys. If you look at the position of that red wire, there is no wire on this end. So the radio is not gonna get any power. So what I had to do was I found the power wire off the original harness, which we verified earlier with the 12 volt tester that it was this bottom one, this gray one here. And I took it and I spliced it into the radio harness directly onto the red wire so that we can provide the radio with power. I did unplug the battery when I was dealing with this one just because, you know, dealing with the power wire at that point, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So let's get the radio connected. Let's get the key turned on and see if we can get some all right, power. Guys. So I got the radio plugged in, I got all the wiring connections made. Uh, like I said, the only one I didn't plug in was that orange one. And that's because that's for the dimmer, which I don't care too much about. So, moment of truth. Let's get this key turned on. Let's see if we get power to the radio. All right. And now let's just turn it on and see if we can get some sound out of it. We got sound and I don't have the antenna plugged in which is why we don't have any station so yeah guys that's how you plug in um, well connect the radio on a second gen GS model Lexus um, now the only thing that's left is to put everything back together um, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to tape up everything with some electrical tape, get it looking all nice again, and then um, get the dash kit put in. Uh, I don't have the dash kit yet. I ordered that from Amazon, and it has not arrived. So when that gets here, I'll do another video showing you guys how I put that in. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions or need any advice, please don't hesitate to message me either here on YouTube or on Instagram at Impact Rated. Uh, guys, thank you for watching. Please like the video and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.